Welcome to Talking Comics, where we are bagged, boarded, and pre-recorded. I'm Ryan. I'm Sean. <laughs> I say that in the most uh, softly uh, submissive voice <laughs> after that lead-in. Shy Shawnee. <laughs> Speak up. Very few people are going to get that joke. Right, yeah. Play on a SNL skit. Uh, with uh, what 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 are they called? Don't explain it to them. Let them Google it. <laughs> uh, Lonely Island. Yeah. Uh, that, there's actually a funny story attached to that. Before we, uh, this is totally coincidental. Not planned. I did not plan to tell this story today. But back in high school, I actually had hair. No. I know. Hard to believe. And. Like all stupid high school boys, I kind of let it grow out a bit. No. I basically had a mop on my head. Not like long, but a mop. Dirt bag. You've, you've seen them around the town walking around and stuff. Dirt bag. And, <laughs> and uh, I went to karaoke one night in St. Helens with some friends. And I was singing really softly into the microphone. And, oh, Carrie. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. And uh, I was I thought singing. That was a stripper here. <laughs> I was singing so softly, like that people couldn't really hear me. I was like my first or second time, so I was super nervous, and I was still very shy at the time. And uh, that's when uh, I got the nickname Shy Ryan, because my hair and like the way it was and how softly I was singing was exactly like uh, Andy Samberg in the Shy Ronnie video. <laughs> <laughs> how long did you walk around with that uh label hopefully not too long um as long as i was a friends with those people those people <laughs> I'm st- i still am with josh he was one of them of course <laughs> i thought it was funny <laughs> yeah, no, it's um that's awesome yeah so there's story time. All right. Have a day. <laughs> <laughs> good night. <laughs> um, Be good to yourselves and each other. <laughs> oh, that'd be... Just like... And then it's just another like 20, 30 minutes of dead silence. Yeah. Um, yeah, then that. <laughs> uh, so... We got some stuff to talk about today. Uh, Sean has yes. some exciting Comic Con news. I do, and you know what? It's for free. I didn't have to pay the fifty five hundred dollars <laughs> for this year. Jesus! If I pay fifty five hundred dollars, I'm I'm expecting a happy ending. <laughs> well, usually when you go to the big three, San Diego, New York, or Chicago, that's what you're going to pay if you want to have a boot there Mm. usually use a happy ending i mean i could you know i think i told the i told the george romero story the last time yeah (laughs) i mean there was other stories too where you know like uh when my buddy and i when we did the cable access thing for some odd reason they thought we were worthy enough to uh moderate a battlestar galactica panel (laughs) and that's when i found out at the time that um the Gallo Play 6 mm-hmm. was gorgeous beyond belief and giant. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I very rarely look up to people, mm-hmm. let alone a female. No offense. It's nothing. <laughs> he doesn't mean that metaphorically. He means it literally. Literally. Just a gi- giant Canadian. The, the, oh, God, I can't think of her name right now. And the dude, um, Firefly guy. Nathan Fillion. Yes, Nathan Fillion. That's his name. They're together. Huh. And I didn't know. It was news to me. Yeah. So I figured, okay, nobody else knew. Nobody really did at the time. I'm like, this is geek nirvana. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, ooh, I want to tell people. I want to tell people. And I'm going out there and I'm, you know, we're introducing actors and actresses and yeah. Doing stuff like that. And I'm like, oh my God, I love you in this. I thought you were great in that. He's like, you know what? Honestly, that was about 
a year and a half before I joined the cast. I'm like, oh, fuck, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what happens. So, like, there's, <laughs> I can tell stories at Comic-Con. But I have some really good stuff that doesn't involve me. <laughs> Do tell. Oh, let's start with uh, one of my favorites, Quentin Tarantino. Mm-hmm. New movie coming out. Huh. Dropped. Really? He is doing a movie circulating around Charles Manson. Huh. I think, I, I think I've heard rumors about this. Yes. We've got some uh, we've got some casting already too. Yeah. Kind of dropped that. Brad Pitt. Don't know what he's playing. You know what? Cast him as Charles Manson. <laughs> he may be like older than Sean now. You know what, though? D- dude can fucking... He, he can act his ass off. Yeah. He can play Charles Manson. I'm 16-year-old Charles Manson. Exactly. <laughs> totally, they, Brad. You totally are. <laughs> they also cast uh, Margot Robbie huh. in the movie, too. Uh, Harley Quinn from yeah. the Suicide Squad. I'm guessing, if I were to guess, Sharon Tate, the victim. Yeah. Yeah, more than likely. But, oh my God. Her, her star is just like... Psh, mm-hmm. You know? She's on the rise. Um, let's see, a little bit more news here. That's all I got with that right now. More still to come. Wonder Woman 2. Yeah. Was locked. Yeah. And yes, they have, uh, what's her name, as the director from the first one. Right on. So she's in. Now, um, we talked about this before. Uh, Gal Gadot. Mm-hmm. Giggity. <laughs> <laughs> My new crush. Sorry, Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been set that it's going to be uh, 1980s. Soviet Cold War. Nice. Type era, yeah. Right on. Remember, I, I was, we were talking yeah. about this before. saying like I, I just, thought it was going to be like Vietnam or something. Yeah, we could just, Korean War, Vietnam, just, you, you could just play with her because she's ageless, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Pine is cast. Returning. I don't... I have a theory about that. We've talked about yeah, this at the I was shop. Like, I, was, I, I think we talked about this on air. I don't know. If so, if, if you're thinking that, forgive us, folks, but you're, Ryan's got a case of Sean-itis <laughs> because it's one long conversation. Are, are you talking... Because Pine, he was the guy from the last movie, Steve right? Trevor. Yeah. Yeah. And you said uh, it would be so cool if they made him Martian Manhunter yes. in the next one. And, yes. And Steve Trevor was just the form he decided to take on. Yes. Because Gal Gadot made shit for the first movie, which made a gazillion dollars. Yeah. And brought everything. So we could just like... And all the cast... Spoilers if you haven't seen it. They all died. Yeah. Except for her. So they bring her back. All the money goes to her. New cast. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's my theory. Make make him Jean Jones. Mm-hmm. But then again, I got another theory. Maybe you know this would be me if like if I got hired on. Um, she was fucking around, or he was fucking around with an Amazonian, and he had a pregnant wife back home, <laughs> and the kids all grown up, and they recast him as. The... <laughs> and she's Awkward. like, "Oh my god, yeah." <laughs> it's like, well, it's in the eighties, you know, like Cold War, and then like. There's a young Jerry Springer they could write into the show. That's how I got my idea for the show. <laughs> uh, I met I met Trevor Jr. and Wonder Woman. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's Wonder Woman news. <laughs> um, I don't know if uh, a lot of people have saw it, but there was a couple trailers at San Diego Comic Con. I'm pretty sure you could. Go online right now and see them. Mm-hmm. A little something called Black Panther. Yep, yep. Oh, there's new footage trailer that's out now. Hmm. And Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. With a talking Hulk. Oh, yes, I heard about that. The banter back and forth with him and Thor. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Which is uh, is good, really good because that's uh, true to form for uh, Planet Hulk. They yeah. the like the a machine they put on him so he can translate like so he can talk to the other uh, gladiators, basically made it so like he could use 
higher capacity of his brain while hulked out. And the uh, price of admission alone will be worth the fact that, I mean, it's a, I'm guesstimating again that they're going to explain why they weren't part of Civil War. Yeah. You know. Hmm. But uh, another trailer that dropped with new footage was uh, the Justice League trailer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? By chance, see that one? Uh, I've seen some of it. Um, the Jeremy Irons part, Alfred. Yeah, yeah. played Alfred. He was talking to a unknown person. He, he knew you. Who had a little bit up. of red shoulder? So weird that he had a little bit of red shoulder. I missed that. In the bottom corner. Uh huh. You see like a little bit of a shoulder, and it looked red. But also, kind of in in Alfred's glasses, there was a little bit of a green haze. That's what I'm getting at. And I, yeah. So you're Is thinking that Superman or Green Lantern? Exactly. They teased the fuck out of Hal Jordan on the on the CW series, and and they even said it in the trailer too. Mm -hmm. The lanterns. Yeah, the lanterns aren't yeah. going to protect us. Exactly. Um, yeah, so like they kind of made it so it looked like it might have been Superman or it might have been Green Lantern kind of at the same time. It's both of them. <laughs> hand in hand like prom dates. <laughs> oh, another another uh, couple other uh, news footage stuff. I could just zip through this real quick here. Um, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah. Uh, sure about that one too? Yeah, I heard. Uh, Paul Rudd. Mm -hmm. Michael Pena. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and they made some, from what I understand, they made some modifications to the Wasp suit. So it looks a bit more like it did does in like comics than uh, it did at the end of uh, Ant Man One. I just love the fact that they uh, it was Paul Rudd, and Michael Pena doing the uh, remember the time like in the first yeah. one. Yeah, I got a cousin that did this and did that, and remember the time that this happened. He knew this guy who knows this guy who talked to this other guy, and they're explained what they do here is like a two or three minute. Uh, dissertation like that and they're ex explaining the entire Marvel universe cinematic universe from the first Iron Man <laughs> to Michelle Pfeiffer who was cast as Janet Van, D Van Dyne the original Wasp ah oh, yes 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 yeah. <laughs> so Michelle Pfeiffer's back in the comics people <laughs> uh, Tim Burton's Batman Returns Catwoman yeah she looks good too so she'll do all right. Last bit of new. Well, I got two other ones too. Um, Brie Larson, Captain Marvel. Yes, uh, I, I've heard a little bit about this one. On on this one, this is this is like the drop that everyone on the internet's talking about right now. Um, because a certain. Mr. Jackson uh, is cast to play in this movie. And rumor has it, he's got both of his eyes. Because? He hasn't lost it yet. It's set in the 90s. Yes, in the 90s. Uh, Which is this is going to be a There's going to be a lot of really bad clothing styles in this movie. <laughs> Nick Fury with two eyes and... Bunch of flannel. <laughs> I would I, pay to see that. I think it was good. Oh, wait, I will be paying to see that. Oh yeah, a couple times. Um, and do you want to say it or do I? All right, I'll give the, it to you. The main, the main, one of the main villains, the scroll. The scroll. Which We're finally opens up, bringing him in. Opens up a wide door. Um, I actually just watched a video about this a little while ago. And you remember in uh, Winter Soldier, when like Cap's like, "You gotta trust me," and uh, Nick's last like, guy "Last person, last person I, tr uh, last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye." Mm -hmm. So they're gonna. They've never told the story of how Nick Fury lost the eye. That's part of the the allure of yeah. of him. In the comics, the original Nick Fury lost his eye uh, from a. Uh, a Stepping on a landmine. Yeah, they've also done it where the Punisher took his eye, um, Thanos took his eye, um, 
you know, he lost it back in um, when when he was part of the Howling Commandos. Yeah, World War know. One. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two. Two, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. We could do a whole Nick Fury episode in the future. Uh, we could do a couple hour podcast just on his eye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, because we got... We got two. We could get two podcasts out of Nick Fury, yeah. white and black, <laughs> yeah, ebony funny. and ivory, <laughs> ebony and ivory. But uh, yeah, they showed a um, quite a bit of footage in D twenty three, the Disney celebration. Mm-hmm. They showed some uh, Captain Marvel stuff, and then they showed the Infinity Wars trailer, yep, yep. which was separate from the Comic Con one, because. Um, Brie Larson was in the suit in the Infinity Wars trailer, and they dropped a gigantic poster. Mm-hmm. She's not on the poster. Uh, but she was in the footage for yeah. D23. So a lot of people, like, until they actually showed the footage, because they dropped the poster first, from what I understand, uh, everyone, you know, as soon as they put out a picture of something, analyze, 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 uh-huh. analyze. And people were like, where's Captain Marvel? Well, it's a thing with the success of Wonder Woman. We'd like, okay, uh, Captain Marvel's coming, Captain Marvel's coming, and then Wonder Woman made some serious bank and dominated, and it's like, fucking Captain Marvel's here! Faster, faster. <laughs> She's here now. And uh, But what really caught my eye was front and center. Thanos and his Black Order. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with the Black Order? Uh, somewhat. I've done a little bit of research on him. Got a little bit here. For those listening, the un- uninitiated, let's just go through real quick. Black Order are kind of like, um, if you've ever seen or are familiar with X-Men and Apocalypse and his four horsemen. Yeah, like they're, they're his generals. Kind of like that. And I'm just going to run through real quick. We got a, a one one of the Black Orders called Ebony Maw. Um, He's like the uh, genius intellect yeah. specializes in persuasion, mm-hmm. so they all have powers. Yeah, utilizes a teleportation device and force field generator. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. he can just like you know the giant Captain America shield for her. yeah. Uh, Corvus Glaive, that's his number one dude right there. Uh, it's Thanos' most feared general, uh, who yes. has enhanced speed. I mean, he is the ultimate. Speed, strength, durability, and endurance. Uses a bladed pike, which can cut through anything, and in his hand makes him immortal. So as long as he's holding it, like, you can't kill this guy. Kind of like old school Thor. Yeah. Back in the day. Pretty he, much. If he wasn't holding his hammer, he's a he's an uh, old man. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with that guy, because, like... Uh, him being like you know the go-to guy, he's like the general, his right they, hand. Yeah, they did a and run like, with him. He's for like a while. A, like a master tactician oh, and yeah. like super genius. I was look at uh, I go to Star, which Corvus Glaive. I remember seeing Star Wars and they did General Grievous, mm-hmm. where that one character it didn't last too long. He was like the minus the scummy, you know, backpedaling villain, the one that had the four lightsabers mm-hmm. and everything, but. If you read the novels and read the books and stuff like that in Star Wars, I'm like, Corvus Glaive. They base it on, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, General Grievous. Definitely a Corvus Glaive type character. Uh, Proxima Midnight is the third one, mm-hmm. who is uh, Corvus Glaive's wife. Uh, uh, probably won't be in the movie. No, she's in it. I know she's in the movie, but probably won't be his wife in the movie. Because in the movie, Hopefully. they're the children of, Santa, of Thanos. They're not actually, like, the Black Order. They're titled the Children of Thanos. I'm a Game of Thrones guy, so hopefully baby brother's sister. <laughs> <laughs> ew. I know ew, but let's look past ew and just go on with the story. I'm just <laughs> saying. I'm just saying. But her lance transforms. She has a, a, a power lance that transforms into um, unavoidable toxic beams. Yeah. Now... Basically, uh, from what I've heard... Omega Beams from yeah. <laughs> like Dark Side. And uh, basically the power of a supernova. Yes. Each blast is about the same strength level as a, a freaking star going supernova. Yes. And the last... 
how are the Avengers going to win? <laughs> I'm getting to that because I, I, I have a theory. We've talked about this. Is it Spiderman? I really hope it's Spiderman. La- <laughs> the last one is, here we go, not too impressive, but he's called the Black Dwarf. <laughs> he's the brother of Corvus Glaive. Mm-hmm. Um, he has enhanced density and impenetrable skin. So he's basically the combination of Luke Cage and the Hulk. <laughs> I was going to say, hey, look, it's space Luke Cage. Yeah, <laughs> and the Hulk. Because, like, he could... St- I remember reading one episode where he stepped on s- Jupiter and crushed it. <laughs> so, and I think Galactus was about ready to eat it or something. He's like, hey! <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> It's like you like you you walk up to a kid about to eat an ice cream, knock it out of their hand. <laughs> so I am predicting. Here's another one of my theory, kind of like my uh, Martian Manhunter thing with Wonder Woman. You saw the first Avengers, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Loki stabbing Coulson. Yeah. Which pretty much, you know, he was a fanboy of Cap, and he was like the big thing, and mm-hmm. Sam Jackson used it as a way to create the Avengers where Cap was like the pinnacle of the Avengers. Yeah, yeah. His death ignited the Avengers forming. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing in this one, we're going to lose a lot of people. Yeah. This, be ready for a tearjerker, especially, and I'll tell you because I'm going to be the one crying. Shut but up, Sean. I'm trying to watch the movie. We're definitely losing. Cap is going to die in yeah. this one. If His death will... Because this Avengers Infinity War Part 1 is the end of Phase 3. Mm-hmm. So, as Phil Coulson started it, this will be the end. And then we'll just go from there. And I think it's either, I think it's going to be Black Panther that starts Phase 4 or Captain Marvel. I can't remember the dates on which one comes out first. I think Black Panther comes out first, I right? I think Black Panther comes yeah, out yeah, yeah. first. So, Black Panther will be the. First one, like Ant Man was the beginning I of know phase three. Captain Marvel is November fourth, twenty eighteen. Yeah, everything's twenty eighteen now. Well, like as far like I, I know it's in November of twenty eighteen. That's yeah. I don't know about uh Black Panther. I think Black Panther is May. May, probably. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we're so yeah, we're losing and I would even go so far as to say we're losing which we ta- I gave you the scenario when we did the Spider-Man podcast. Kill Stark. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And then put a... <laughs> I don't like that one. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that one. I'm not saying it's going to happen, because not to mention the fact that we're doing a Captain Marvel movie, and we got now they're bringing in Skrulls. Yeah. So, are they really dead? <laughs> the ultimate cop-out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If you'd like to explain to our listeners, go right ahead with scrolls. But <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about how funny it would be for them to uh, like throw the scrolls into Daredevil. Anyone who's ever read like into Daredevil and Elektra's comics mm-hmm. knows what I'm talking about. For like 15 years of comics, Elektra was actually a scroll. Oh, uh, the biggest middle finger from comics in that time. Yep. And that was right after they put away the middle finger that was the Clone Saga. Uh, I actually enjoyed the Scrolls more than the clones. Um, and that's pretty much all I got that I took away from uh, Comic-Con. Like I said, it was awesome because I mean, I'm starting to get into this technology. I'm listening to you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> There's little laughs. Plus, I got, a, I got a couple people that I knew that were actually there. They're like, oh, check this out. Oh, shit, check this out. <laughs> and I said that back. They're like, holy shit, what? Did you write that? I'm like, no. He's like, why haven't you wrote a script? Like, no, no one will hire me. We know that. <laughs> Not after Birds of Prey. And I'm definitely, yeah. <laughs> I took a stab at a hero thing once upon a time. I'm <laughs> done. Kevin Feige and them, as much as I love them, I... They won't ever work with me. <laughs> Never. They don't even... Yeah. They just email you one day. I really liked your work on that... Uh, What was that name? That, that, that 
That uh, that's the day I'm gonna have that my heart satire at- movie. Uh, D- Black Devil Doll. That's the day I'm gonna have my heart attack and fall over. Uh, <laughs> I die happy. I don't even get to finish the email. <laughs> no, there's no responding. Just, yeah. I'm reading it. Correction. I don't do that anymore. Give me my Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> all right well i have a little bit to talk about myself not uh it's not new news in particular uh just you know what i've been up to lately in the nerd world um this kind of covers all aspects of stuff we talk about here video games comic books and book books and i just remembered Totally forgot about it. A possible Netflix series for The Witcher. So I'm sure a good amount of you are familiar with The Witcher video games. They became very popular, very highly praised. Especially that third one that came out back in 2015. I've been playing the crap out of that lately. Uh, I didn't really give it a fair shake when it first came out. Because the uh, difficulty curve for certain areas was ridiculous. I just, like, heading out on a, a contract, just do-do-do-do-do, gonna go kill monsters, do-do-do-do-do, what the fuck is that? Ah! Level 38 Griffin! And I'm, like, level 14. Oh, that's right. Yeah, this is the one you were telling me about that just jumped you from yeah. level... Yeah, like, okay. And I get, that's a slight exaggeration, but like so, I I kept getting like screwed over in certain parts of it because like I wasn't a high enough level, mm-hmm. and I didn't like know for sure where these higher level creatures were gonna be at. Like I'd just be going along, up oh, level twenty bandits. I'm still level fifteen. There's thirty of them. I'm dead. Um, but I've gone back and I'm having a lot more fun with it now. I'm actually like you know consistently leveling up and whatnot anyways that's not like exact that's not the main focus of what i wanted to talk about today i uh i've been so interested in the game and the lore of the world i started doing some internet research wikipedia googling and i found out more about about the witcher series um originally so originally it was all started from a a line of short stories that the writer titled the witcher series um he started writing them back in the 1980s. They didn't really get their popularity till the 1990s. And, uh, and I, I bought the translated version of the first uh, novelization book of uh, the Witcher series line. Because mm-hmm. they took all the short stories and put them in, you know, proper order and bound them inside of a book, right? Um, you have this? Yes. Well, the first book. There's like seven. Going to borrow it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know when I finish it. Fair enough. Um, so I'm super into this, like, whole world that this this Polish dude in the 1980s came up with. I mean, it's got tons of stuff I love. Magic and... Uh, you know, sword fight. No, Sean, don't you look at me with those eyes. Are you here to play magic? <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys later. No. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, monsters and whatnot. So it's super interesting to me. And this, like, the more I look into it, the more like I realize how it deep and rich this universe the guy's created and has so much backstory that i need to get all these books and start reading them and i found out comics too so i got one of those coming eventually that i'm gonna do like a full review on for you guys uh but i just like i wanted to talk about like you know the witcher universe a little bit uh like and all the different things it entails like it's not your typical hack and slash RPG type game, and you need to learn and investigate what you're about to fight, 
so you can bring the proper utensils and tools to fight it, which is really cool. A little tedious at times, but really cool. So I have a, a list of uh, different monsters and creature types from the bestiary that you get uh, by fighting monsters. You fill it out as you you know learn more about each monster and whatnot. So, and these are all the classes and a couple of creatures from each class. Okay. So starting up at the top, we have the beasts, you know, dogs, wolves, bears, and, like, wild boars and stuff like that. Very simple. You know, what, what else would you expect going out in the wilderness? Thank you for not mentioning my name. <laughs> Sean's. <laughs> Sean's. <laughs> Those are bears you really want to be careful around. Ooh, yeah, that's right. There's want, leather involved. I want my honey. Honey. Looking for a cub. <laughs> Uh, you have the cursed ones, which are, you know, werewolves and uh, these ones, these one things called berserkers, which are very similar to werewolves. Mm -hmm. They're uh, like Viking style warriors that in the heat of battle uh, turn into a fucking monstrous bear. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's like, they pull from so many different, uh, you know, uh, mythological religions and whatnot for this like they, they did dig deep and i just have like some of the basics on here and i'm not even including like the expansion packs for the game and whatnot yeah folks this is gonna be a whole nother podcast because <laughs> yeah like i like this is just mostly me like giving you information that i've gotten from playing the game and reading a couple of chapters from the book uh you have the drachnoids which are kind of like dragony type monsters. Yeah. You have the basilisk, which uh, I don't even really know how to describe it. It's a lot like this next one, but slightly different. The cockatrice. Basically, a really scary flying chicken. They're hybrids. Like, it, it, but think, oddly think, enough, think of a griffin. Yeah. But your worst nightmare times a million. <laughs> <laughs> well, oddly enough, they for some reason they fall into the drachnoid section instead of the hybrid section, which is actually coming up here in a bit. And then in, also in the drachnoids, you have wyverns, which are like basically little dragons. They don't breathe fire. They're just like flying lizards that are really mean. Okay. Uh, then you have your elementals section. Also, uh, I should also mention, so each one of these uh, uh, categories, you can... Uh, find recipes for blade oils which are basically poisons which i and you can then you know find upgraded versions that deal more damage and whatnot so like you know you're like oh, i gotta go fight at griffin i need to use a hybrid oil on my silver blade so i can do more damage to it and hopefully not die <laughs> uh you have your elementals which uh gin and like golems and then you have, you know, your ice, fire, and earth elementals, mm -hmm. and the like. Now we're to the hybrids. Uh, griffins. Damn when I jumped the gun. <laughs> I'm just saying, we got a, a listener who's a, a DM I'm fond of, who listens yeah. religiously. You know <laughs> who you are. going to love this podcast. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I love all this stuff. Whenever I find it, like, it's one of the reasons I don't get really into, like, D&D. Is like well, one, I don't really have all the all that time. Two, I'm not very money. <laughs> yeah. Two, I'm not very creative, and that leads into my third one. I always steal from stuff I like. So you know, if I had been pl playing this, I would make my character exactly like Geralt, yeah. the main character of uh, the Witcher series. <laughs> and uh, anyways, so you have Griffins art and Arch Griffins, which are like a bigger, meaner version. And some of them spit venom. Now that's terrifying. Just imagine, folks, for a minute. Let me take you on. Let me paint a, a picture for you. A bird, an eagle, face and beak. A lion's mane and like, like muscular monstrosity of a like body. Uh, bird talons and wings. And in some mythologicals, mythological uh, tales, like I think in Greece, they have a freaking like snake for a tail. 
Yeah, yeah. Or is that a... No, I think that's a... Shit, I can't remember what that's it called. It was like... It, it was the lion, the, the the falcon, and the cobra head. Yeah. Um, then you have harpies. <sighs> yeah, you... you care- I'd rather deal with the lion, the falcon, yeah. and the cobra than the harpies. Careful not to catch those <laughs> harpies, folks. Ugh. <sighs> You, you need to use the hybrid oil on that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty pretty standard, you know, creature of myth. Uh, this one you don't come across a lot in the game. Succubus. Ooh. And I'm, I'd be the first victim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> if it wasn't for the aphrodisiac effect that succubi have, you'd probably stay the fuck away from these things. Because they're not... They're, they're very, they are very pretty. But in this world... They have, they're they're a hybrid of human and goat, like which is you know you're like yeah that makes sense succubus, demon. Look but, at the rack on them though. <laughs> I, it's been documented. I drink a lot, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then never mind. We can move on. <laughs> and I'm a geek, so. <laughs> uh, you know they have. That's three strikes. Hooven hoof feet and horns and a tail. You know it's all right. <laughs> Foreplay. <laughs> uh. Then you have the insectoids section. Uh, I don't really have anything down in this one because basically the name says it all. Giant bugs. Yeah. Giant bugs. How many of you listening right now don't even like little bugs? <laughs> I'm talking about it and I, I don't like them. Uh, and they are the like the biggest pest to me in this. Like... Because <laughs> uh, I'll just be going through the forest and now there, there's, then there's like six of them on either side of me and I'm just like, what the fuck? Where are you coming from? Uh, the next class is one that you probably will deal with the most. The necrophages. Uh, ghouls, also known as corpse eaters. Then you have drowners, which are s- similar to ghouls, but they're water monsters they swim around and hang out on beaches uh then you have your various forms of hags i'm not talking about old ladies although they look like old ladies uh they're very similar to ghouls in like but they're they're more sentient uh they have some brain function you know it's not all instinctive hunt kill eat but they'll like they'll like there's grave hags that'll go gr- rob graves and use their bone bones that they dig up for uh, rituals and stuff like that. Zombie mermaids. Kinda. I I'm just saying because, like, well, yeah. I'm. You also not... have w- zombie mermaid would be a, the water hags. Yeah. Those ones are annoying. They spit venom at you. I feel like I'm telling like a story like I was there. Well, no, you. I saw see, it happen. You have the novel. See, I'm only, folks. I'm only uh, knowledgeable in the comic. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, they all tie together, which is so cool. And what's like what's really brought me into this? I love yeah. stories that have. I also hate it at the same time, that you have to get like all these different forms of entertainment to get like the full story on the character. Uh, then you have your. Ogroids or orgoids, depending. I don't really know how to pronounce it. Uh, your cyclopses, which tend to be on like the Norse Isles in this game, mm-hmm. in this world, from w- mostly what I've done. Like I've only come across like two that weren't in the Isles of like the mountains and stuff. Um, trolls, your ice trolls, your rock trolls, your wood trolls, etc. And those are always interesting to run into because you don't always have to kill them. Sometimes you can just like give them a, a really tough riddle and just go go about your business. I'm not familiar. You know, trolls. No, like, no, no, I am familiar with that, but... Like, uh, I saved a person by tricking the trolls with a riddle. I said, you know... The, it was a. I'll, I'll answer your riddle, and if I get it correct, I you answer my riddle, and if you don't get it correct, this do, this do, guy is free. Now, do they um, 
vary as far as trolls go, like, you know, water trolls. Yeah, mountain you, trolls you, you have your or, uh, rock trolls. Rock trolls, yeah. Ice yeah. troll and wood troll, I think. Okay, wood, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, like, in Skellige, the Norse area, you'll tend to run into more ice trolls. So, like... Let, let's say uh, Tolkien's novel. Uh, tr- the mountain trolls can only come out when the moon's up. When the sun comes up, they turn to stone. Uh, they don't really have anything going on like that, but. But, but along those lines, you know what yeah. I'm saying. You know, it's like but it's, there's it's different more, variations. It's, yeah, of, of it's more towards like the classic troll. Okay. Like uh, the first time I came across a troll. I was walking up the mountains, and he attacked me while I was surrounded by goats. That's not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> saw this new shop open up. <laughs> <laughs> saw this troll behind the counter. <laughs> looked like he just you ate... You like funny books? <laughs> he just ate an infant. <laughs> uh, and, like, I, I, I saved a, 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 a non-play... A non- I saved another character by asking the trolls what uh, is light as a feather but not even a troll can hold. Or something along those lines. The troll answered, piss. That wasn't the right answer. I'm pretty sure it was air. (laughs) I don't know. Was that your text? (laughs) No, I get it. No, I get what you're saying. Uh, And most of the time, if you just, like, talk to the trolls that you meet, you can get out of it without having to fight them. This is the game? Yeah. Jesus Christ, man. You know what? Just tell me a story. <laughs> I'm just going to... You sell me on these games. I need, <laughs> I need to play more games. Uh, and the last, the most rare of the Orgoids, the Ice Giants. They were thought to be extinct, but if you go along through the game, you come across one in a quest that you're doing, and you have to help uh, another character kill it. Thor? <laughs> Hjalmar, I think, was his name. Uh, well, it's not one of the Warriors 3. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> um, then you have your relic creatures, which are like fiends, which are like these basically like these giant monsters. I don't really know how it's like. They have like deer antlers that are like the size of it like as long as a human yeah, yeah. giant freaking monsters with three eyes they reminded me like again like i'm saying folks ryan is a little bit more knowledgeable because all i i just based on the comics like one of the monsters coming out of the mist kind of stephen king the yeah. mist yeah <laughs> kind of like, <laughs> like that one of those random things just like what the hell is that <laughs> um you have dopplers which are also known as changelings. Doppelgangers. Yeah. Yeah. You find you come across like one of your character's friends is a Doppler. Really? Yeah. Ooh. And uh fuck. Who well, oddly game. enough found, I want to play this game. Who oddly now. oddly enough that fen, that friend ended up, ended up finding a passion in acting. Perfect job <laughs> for you for a person that can change shapes. Mhm. Um you don't really fight them very often because most of the time they're acting <laughs> amongst society trying to mind their own business and not get burnt at the stake. I have no time for you. My agent has a role for me. <laughs> uh, godlings, which I, I'm not, they're kind of like wood nymphs almost. Nymphs? Kind of. like oh, Okay. They're, they're like a subspecies of imps, sort of like something like that. Okay. They, you know, n- nature, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. lost boys, basically. And, oh, no, I'm familiar. <laughs> and uh, then you have a uh, chort, which are a smaller, more aggressive cousin of the fiend. And, you know, various other uh, relic. Like, there's so many. Like, there's a couple that were, like, mission specific that i didn't really feel like i needed to go through okay then you have your specters that one's pretty self-explanatory wraiths and whatnot yeah uh vampires what's a vampire (laughs) a very unknown concept (laughs) except they're different like way different okay what's the 
All right. They're vampires. Now, this is the game or the novel? Or both? Both. Okay. Like, it all it all comes together. Like, uh, the guy who wrote it, wrote the novels, worked alongside the crew. Like, they talked to one another. He helped them actually make the map for the game. That's what I'm saying, because there's, like, little differences that I, I'm not familiar with. Keep like in mind, like it's something, been a while. something they might not have mentioned in the comics that you didn't realize was that part of it or something. Or like maybe that. they just omitted. Yeah, totally. You know, that I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm there's so familiar. many different source materials. Like some of the vamp, I, didn't, I only listed like th- three vampires on, the, in this list. There's like, like uh, at least six. Okay, so like you got Dust Till Dawn, uh, Quentin Tarantino vampires. Then you got like uh, John Carpenter vampires. But then you got like Preacher Jesse vampire who can like sit there and get shit faced. And beat to shit or shot up and all he needs is to suck blood and he's good again. So so what's the variation of this the, one? The two major ones that you you come across most of the time are the Ekimara and the Catechin. They are literally giant bat, pe- bat humanoids. They can't become human. They can, however, turn invisible. Gargoyle type man bat. Yeah. Like from Batman type thing. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, those are the most common ones. Like, I've killed fucking half dozen of them already. <gasps> killed the man bat. <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to do it. No. No. <laughs> uh, you come across them pretty frequently. And throughout the game, like, you're like, like, you're like I'm here to collect for my contract. And like, what was the monster? Ekimara. A what? A vampire. Oh, here's your gold. Like, no one really, like, everyone's, like, familiar with the, you know, the rumor of vampire. Like, you know, you know, Alcino. high-class nobleman with a Eastern European accent. Um, then the vampire's biggest strength. Then, you, like, there's a couple of other ones uh, that you wouldn't come across in the main game, but you'd read about in the books or the comics or find out in, like, find them in DLC for the game. Uh I only went with one. All all the characters on here are just ones from like the main game, all these monsters mm-hmm. and whatnot. Then you have the higher vampire. Now these are the ones that are more along the lines of your typical notion of what a vampire is: a humanoid character. He looks normal. He probably an aristocrat. Walks around in fancy clothes. Sometimes has a thirst for blood. Hive master. And they're, from what I read of the bestiary, uh, they mostly just try to live a normal life and have renounced human blood altogether. Because they don't actually need it to survive like the Ekimara or the Catechin, uh, you know, need after a long sleep in, you know, their dark cavern. Now, in my experience, the Hive Masters don't need it because they feed off the because they have a nest or net multiple nests and they feed off hmm. what their underlings yeah. go well, after in this cuz the higher vampire they don't associate with the ekimara or the catechin they're not even in the same zip code yeah yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> she's an uptown girl exactly <laughs> but they can move yeah like, they're they're super strong super fast yeah. and basically immortal that's why I, you can go from New York to fucking London, England in a blink of an eye and... All right, I'm done. I'm yeah. going back. <laughs> uh, and I haven't actually fought one in the game. They're very rare. And the bestiary says... Uh, no matter how big the reward is, it's not big enough for the risk. Don't fuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even the most prepared witchers... Rarely make it out alive. And now that I've talked a bit about That's a hive master, about uh, the monsters, let me tell you more about witchers. So this is where it all comes down to. For those of you that don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but are still listening because you love monsters, um, witchers themselves are somewhat like monsters. So. Usually, they're the their kids brought into the Witcher schools via, you know, someone being like, "Take my baby! I can't feed it," mm-hmm. or as rewards for jobs. Like, 
uh, I heard a story from one of the in-game characters about how he ended up becoming coming to the Witcher school. And his dad was a drunk and was walking through the swamp and got attacked by a drowner. And a witcher just happened to come along, kill it. And he's like, I don't have the money to pay you. And he's like, give me the first thing you see when you get home. The first thing he saw when he got home was his son. Yeah. And so then they take these boys and basically raise them to be killing machines. They teach them how to fight with sword and axe and whatnot. Mostly sword. That's the witcher, witcher speciality. And... After, you know, they, they're physically and mentally trained enough, they put them through what's called the Trial of the Grasses, where they send them, like, through this cavern, and they have to go up this big old mountain to get their medallion. And they also do... I can only describe it as an experiment on them, on these boys. What, what makes them more animal-like than man-like. They uh, strip them of emotion and, like... Break them down, basically, like you're building a wall. Like rebuilding a wall. They break it down so they can build it back up stronger. And then they put what they call mutagens and, like, basically monster genes inside the Witcher yeah. children. Which looking. gives them cat eyes so that they can see in any light or dark. And they have, like, complete control over their pupils. Like, they... Wow, it's really dark in here. Open. Wow, it's really bright in here. Close. I just looked at... Yeah, I am familiar with that part. It's a cross between... Um, when Frank Miller did uh, League of Shadows and... Gilmio del Toro. I hope I'm saying his name right. I can never pronounce it. <laughs> the Strain. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And they also have enhanced hearing and smell and stuff. So and they're expert trackers. They're super strong, super fast, very resilient, heal really fast. Basically everything a superhero is. Yeah, it's kind of like... Um, there's a, it's a combination of... I can't pay you in money or anything worth, so I'm going to give you this. Whatever this is, is a variation of, and then it's just kind of a, a well, hodgepodge well, of... Well, they get the... Usually it's errors and, and some something or someone that can carry on the, the, the legacy. At least in the comics. Hmm. I'm not quite familiar with what you're talking about. You kind of lost me there. Like... With, uh, okay, like... Uh, one of these uh, witchers saves some. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they're just like, well, I can't pay you in money. So, like you said. Give me the first thing you see when yeah. you get home. That's how they usually get their There's horses. Been, yeah, and yeah, how, yeah, yeah. Back in the day when they still did the witcher trials would get new boys and stuff. Usually it was like, here, take take my firstborn or <laughs> blah, blah, yeah. blah, you know. Uh, Geralt, the main, the main protagonist, uh, he was given to them willingly from his mother for reasons I know not yet. <laughs> I have no idea why yet. Jedi. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, from what little I know, um, and Geralt was like, you know, the best among his class, pretty much. Strongest, smartest, and he was more resilient to, like, the mutagen side effects than the other boys so they like gave him extra ones after he completed his training and that's the reason his hair goes from like black to white and now he's called the white wolf because he has white hair and he's from the wolf school um and he's basically you know the best witcher the most famous witcher he's basically the superman of witchers come on dude you know there's <laughs> There's going to be something there. <laughs> and, you know, he's got multiple nicknames. Like, they call him the Butcher of Blaviken because he killed some bandits there. But, like, there was a misunderstanding. People thought he killed half the town. Half the town was bandits trying to kill him, and he did it in self-defense. Yeah. And, no, he's the Butcher of Blaviken. He's a monster. Uh, he, Gwimblade, Gwimblade, which is elder speak for White Wolf. And 
he has a couple of other nicknames that I can't remember. White Wolf. <laughs> Plain White Wolf. Uh, Google it, folks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so I'm like, I'm I'm like ready to dive head first into this this new world I discovered through playing a video game through their books and their comics and whatnot. So I'll probably do like a full review on the book once I get it down the line. But yeah, I hope you found that interesting, at least as interesting as I and Sean did. Uh, I'm probably going to go home and play it when I'm when we're done recording. <laughs> oh, I got something. All right, uh, I think that's all I got. One more thing for you. Yes. Okay. Uh, so the things we've covered here today, folks. Um, Comic Con and this book. Number one. I love these movies. Mm-hmm. Like I go back and I keep watching. Like right now, I do it all the time because of the fact that these are movies that are well done. I mean. Because, like, we were talking about before, like, Spider-Man dropped a little bit. Yeah. You know, so they're getting the superhero fatigue, Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. overall. But that's fine. It's awesome. Me, personally, and this is just me, have a personal message. I love these movies. I love everything about them. I can't wait for the next Comic-Con 2018. I can't wait for the next time Ryan and I talk about these movies. Yeah. (laughs) I can't wait for... Because these movies take me back... To when I was young, reading comics. These movies take me away because I'm at the age right now where it's like I can take two or three hours, depending on how long these movies are, and I got that sense of wonder. Mm-hmm. I got that, oh my God. Whether it's good or bad, whether somebody likes it, whether somebody doesn't like it. I sit there and I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah. Same reason why I do this with Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, because... I've read this comic, and he has talked about this video game before, and I didn't put two and two together. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, me and this gentleman <laughs> are like, <laughs> we're like on the same level all the time. We're just like constantly talking about stuff we like, and hopefully you guys like it too. Yeah. I can't stop geeking out. <laughs> I mean... That's why I don't mind all these motherfuckers talking about, oh, you're an old man. I'm a little kid inside. <laughs> and you, and these guys see it all the time. I'm like, come on, guys, let's do it. Like I cried in another movie. I cried, yes. I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed to say, yeah, oh, fuck, man, I cried. <laughs> when Peter lit that air conditioning unit off, it was bad. I swear to God. Do you remember when you first saw like, the, the very first Iron Man and you saw Jeff Bridges in the Iron Monger suit? I remember back when I got that comic and it was Iron Monger. Oh my god. But he's a <laughs> bad guy and it's a horrible character. I cried because. <laughs> it's like, shut up, fat man. No, but anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying. I love doing this. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. so fun. And I'm sitting there. I know you guys can only hear and not see, but. Ryan's talking about a video game and some novels, which I've never read. I'm talk- and He's talking about a comic book that I'm like, I know what the hell he's talking about, but not really. <laughs> so I'm like, it's like, yeah, me and this guy. Oh, yeah. We're comparing notes. <laughs> but not really. <laughs> I'm just filling in the gaps of his notes, basically. <laughs> and apparently my life. <laughs> There's stuff you miss, old man. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, I think that's all, all the time we got for this week. Uh, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button if it's red. That means you haven't hit it and are not subscribed. Yeah, and definitely in the comments, don't text me <laughs> or Ryan. But if you by chance are listening and went to Comic-Con, tell us how much fun you had. Yeah. Tell us what you saw. Maybe there's something we didn't talk about mm-hmm. or I missed or anything because I didn't go. It's been a while since I've been. But, yes, comment, and, like, uh, subscribe. Yeah, hit that like button if you if you like it when I ramble on about video games. that if The more you hit that like button, the more I know you like it and I'll do it more often. 
or the more we'll talk about new trailers, etc. We're not using it like the like button doesn't get us up higher in the YouTube trending stuff. That has no effect. It lets us know you enjoyed what you saw. So if you want more of that type of content, you have to hit the like button. All right? All right. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, as always, have a day.